Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel, I know. Back in the garage. We were out for one day in the last video and it's back in here again. But if you did join me in the last video, I did a walk around of all of the work I did over the last eight months over winter. There's still a little bit more to do, but basically now it's time to get the rear of the vehicle built up. So like the storage area, you know, camping, all that kind of stuff. I, I've been working pretty hard on, on getting the rest of the internals looking how I want them to. I showed you in the last video and a while ago I had an old table and it had it was like one of these tables that expand out and you put a centre portion in to make it bigger for when the guests come for tea um, but I stole the draw runners off of it and at first I thought oh these are rubbish because they only open that much but then they open like that and, and they're extremely strong they're not too heavy and uh, that should provide a pretty solid draw runner for the for the draw system design that I'm thinking about. And I picked up some wood today. Um, I've got some plywood. Um, this is about uh, 10 mil thick, so it's not massively thick, but it should be strong enough. And if not, I can have two of them together. And I've just got some uh, 45 by 45, um, so that should uh, that should be good. So in terms of what I'm going for in organising the back end is I'm going to have the two storage boxes here and here for the gullwing window so you can open them and access recovery gear or the other side, whatever we put in there. I'm going to have the cargo rack about this high and on the cargo rack, you know, as you've seen before, I put like roll mats, I put bags with baby clothes in and my clothes and whatever you want can go on there really. It's just stuff you can access very easily. And at the bottom here is really this draw system thing and kind of what I'm going to be building in this video and it isn't actually going to be a draw system. I want to keep the vehicle multifunctional. So for the draw system, I'm going to have two big draw runners bolted down here and here with the original tie down points and on top of that just one big flat work surface that can come all the way out to about here. Using the other two draw runners another additional work surface will be able to come out the back of it and maybe that has like a foldable wash basin on or a chopping board or the stove whatever and also it just means I can just take all that stuff out and then I've just got a flat surface I can chuck suitcases on snowboards uh, skis you know the bicycle what I don't know whatever else I want to put in there and it just keeps the vehicle usable for if we're not going on a trip if that makes sense so that's what I'm gonna do and that's what I'm gonna start building so let's get to it First off, I've taken away the original tie down points um, and I'm going to use those holes with these L shaped brackets to mount the base of the whole frame in place. So this is where I get my tape measure out and I try and look really clever and sort of pretend that I know what I'm doing. Yeah, 75 something or others, that'll probably do the job. There we go, cut that. Just measured up in place where I want these, these brackets to go. So I'm going to have something like this. And that bolt will hold that there and then I've just got to mark the piece of wood and basically drill a hole directly through the piece of wood. But I just need to get the angles correct so it's not skew if like that. He does it. That's it. I've made the other runner and I've put it in place. So both runners are just there and um, it looks shit. Uh, it looks okay, but it, it's not finished yet. You know, you've got to give me some credit. I tried to mirror the runners, but they're, they're kind of like both exactly the same. So you can't have this piece of wood on the inside on this side here, because they only open one way. And when you flip them around, it's identical, obviously. Um, but this one, comes out like that. This one comes out like that. I haven't cleaned them yet, so they sound terrible. The only movement really is, is the actual twisting of, of, the, of the metal. 
and this one's basically exactly the same. So when they're when they're actually screwed to a piece of wood, it should eliminate that because that that movement, that roll, is gone. Um, I keep telling myself that. And if I put this on here, this is basically what I'm going for. Um, and it doesn't seem too bad. I'm, you know, I'm never going to know really how this copes with the weight until it's all bolted together. Well, I've knocked up a prototype of the draw system using the table dividers, those runners I showed earlier. And sadly, those runners just aren't strong enough at all. I even spent a great deal of time welding in triangulation, trying to make them stronger. But they're clearly just not designed to cope with the sort of things I'm asking them to do, obviously. And I call it a prototype because it didn't work. But if it did work, it wouldn't be a prototype. Wise words. But you can see the triangulation I've welded in, even put stiffeners along the top there. Triangulation in the bracket too. That kind of connects it to the to the vehicle um, and, and to be honest they've just ended up weighing so much that they're sort of losing their functionality and, um, and I'm just going to abandon this and I have done and it's weeks later if you hadn't guessed it. So I've purchased some new runners and I've actually got those built here and I'll show you some close-up photos of what I've got going on here because the lighting's pretty bad in the back of the vehicle. But each one of these runners is rated to support up to 100 kilos. I've got four of them and that was kind of my mistake. I ended up buying four instead of buying just two and I'm kind of glad I did because the design of the runner means that they can kind of come apart very easily but by having two of them together functioning as one and kind of clamping this, this piece here has meant that I've got an extremely strong runner. I mean, I, I should, this should be able to support my body weight. You can hear a bit of a crack there in the wood, but you know, you're, you're, you're getting quite a lot of support out of that. It's really, really strong. I mean, what am I? I'm like 70 kilos there and thereabouts. So I'm not really heavy, but obviously the two of them together, you know, they're going to support a lot of weight and you can, you can literally move the vehicle with them, which is, which is great. I mean, they're really tough and they lock in nicely as well. The way they're fitted into the vehicle is just by a 120 by 45 block of pine. I've counter sunk some Allen head bolts in there that go through the original tie down points and they've obviously been supported with washers and I've clamped those down really really tight. You know there's no movement at all in the way they've been bolted down. I think it's a bit of a better setup because you've just got bolts going directly through the blocks of wood and they're counter sunk in so the hinges so the draw runners can obviously function. So this is the main platform and uh, it really isn't thick enough actually. I mean may maybe I uh, put another one on top of it or I get some very thin checker plate aluminium and put that on top but I, I kind of want to keep it light. I think this whole setup is going to weigh I say around 25 kilos and uh, yeah I mean that isn't a huge amount of weight but it it's weight and you've got to kind of factor these things in. But you can see I've put some small draw runners on the inside of that. So I'm going to have an under platform that can come out of that too, as I probably mentioned earlier, but it has been a few weeks since I've been filming this, so I kind of forget what I've said in that time. So I kind of want to make it that one, like that. I guess we need that in fully. Let's see how it feels. Ooh, nice. Yeah, it's good. It's got a little bit of a lock on it too, so it's not going to move. And there's no scooty. What I mean by scooty, that's a technical term, but <laughs> what it what it means is it's just my way of saying that I haven't built it properly. So one hinge is a bit out of the further out than the other, and one isn't locking properly. So they're both locking really good. Yeah, going in good too. So that is, that's not bad. Let's see if the actual hatch closes on this, the, the boot. Oh, 
have a look. Yeah, it's clear. It's clear. That's really good. It doesn't look too bad at all. Probably pushing against that a little bit though, but that's okay because that's going to keep it closed. I can kind of see it pushing against that plastic, but that just simplifies the whole thing down for me because I don't have to build a lock at all for this. So it comes out like that, that bit there, and that's, that's pretty good. I mean, it's just a little bit of a workspace. It's a shame that it isn't coming out more, but again, as I said, old Dinkus here got those draw runners and not other ones, but I'm just going to put the, the cargo rack in and see what the space in between is like. This cargo rack's by no means completed. Um, I made this last year and it's made from just curtain poles and, and some uh, dog guards. And I've had to open the gull wings to put this in. And it essentially goes like that. And then you've got two hinges screwed into the metal, the sheet metal of the back seat, like that. And you kind of lift it and it locks in. And that's it. And that's it sitting like that. And obviously if you then fold the seat forward, you know, this, this can move. But the, but the main idea was just, was just kind of simplicity really. It used to have two long legs here as well, but I've branched those off to the side and I'm going to do something with the, the plastic trim at the side for that. So I've put the alu box there because I'm kind of simulating a large fridge. We are going to get a fridge or a cooler or something, but it will not be that big. But um, it's just kind of worst case scenario and the stove can sit there. I assume this can close. Yeah, it can. I wonder how much space there is. Oh, quite a bit actually. I'm surprised. Um, but yeah, if we open that, I guess the idea is, uh, you know, you pull this out. But unfortunately the alley box has got these little stackables at the top for other boxes. So it's not going to clear that, but I can always make that a little bit higher. Stove can go there. I'm just doing this to the side. This is not the final stove, by the way. This is one I made a little while ago. Again, another prototype because it didn't work first time. And that's the way it goes. But now you can open the alu box without actually having to drag it out. So the major major issue we had on our last trip, and, and that was a trip where we did two weeks, me, Meg, and Max just going around Scandinavia. It was a really, really nice trip, and it was a great learning curve for us because it was the first big trip. I say big trip, it isn't really, but the first large trip we did with our son, and it went really well. The only issue we had was the setup, and, and it was kind of like what I said last time, you know, you're putting loads of things in the back of the vehicle, things on top of things on top of things, and to get things, you've got to move things out of the way, and it gets really irritating, and if you're moving a lot day by day like we were, um, you don't have that convenience. So this is just really to bring back a little bit of convenience to life. I've got an MSR multi-fuel there, so that can use white gas and uh, just normal gas bottles, which Meg prefers. It's much easier. I use white gas in the winter. And I've got this wind burner here, which is not actually going to be there anymore. And I've got a different case made of aluminium, slightly bigger, um, and it's going to be a triple burner. And they're going to be able to unscrew and go into a backpack. So and this can unclip as well and go into a pack. So it's gonna be a modular system for winter, summer, but also for hiking as well. So things can be unclipped and you know you can take them with you because obviously there's a fire ban a lot of the time in the summer, but with stoves, you can kind of get away with it in some areas provided you're, um, you know, you're not a total idiot or you're on, you're on, you know, you're on rock. I've obviously got the gull wings as well. I still haven't uh, built the box at the back um, I need to get some aluminium and try and try and do that or go to the metal guys in town and just get them to make it for me and then I bend it um, to the right shape but one side's going to be maybe a kitchen like cutlery and stuff I don't know the other side recovery kit maybe a tool kit I don't know so uh, I guess time will tell the cargo rack is, is unfinished and um, again I'm not sure what to do with this I was going to get it made from aluminium um, but you know the strength there but if we enter a collision and everything's just contained, it's quite good really. So you have these sort of bars at the side that hit the pillars to stop it going forward. It's also going to be clamped down with some bolts here on this sheet metal just there. I'll build some brackets for it. And, um, you know, it's just really there to stop everything kind of flying forward and, and protect 
you know, us and my son most of all, you know, I worry about him more than anyone really. So um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I guess I'll make, I could make it a bit higher depending on what the cooler's like that we buy the fridge. And that'll, that'll depend really, that, that will dictate everything actually, how, how tall that fridge is. So that's another job done on the Jeep, but it isn't quite done yet. I've just noticed this material here is bowing quite a lot. And uh, as I said right from the start, it's way too thin. It's a strong material and maybe with two layers, it will be pretty good. But you know, I might just try and look for something else first or a completely different piece of wood altogether, maybe off of an old table, for example, something pretty thick, but maybe pretty light and um, yeah, pop that on there as well because this stuff does kind of weigh quite a bit. But the whole setup's probably around 25 kilos um, and that's, in my opinion, good weight because it's added a lot of functionality to the vehicle. You know, as I said before, when we traveled, I really hated just pulling the alley box out. Everything was just stacked on top of things. You couldn't open the lid of the alley box really and look in it properly. And yeah, it was, it was, real, it was real hard work and it really whittled us down. You know, we we're traveling with a young child and, you know, he's 100% the whole day. You know, you can never really stop and you need those conveniences, I think, to kind of save the energy. So at the end of the day, you're not completely destroyed because it will then knock on to the day after that and the day after that. And after two weeks, you're, you know, you're like, wow, you know, I, I want to go home. You know, I'm not having fun anymore, for example. So, um, yeah, hopefully when we go away this year, whatever we do, if the fuel prices come down, um, then we'll go further afield. If not, we'll stay kind of local. It, it'll be a bit, it'd be a bit of an easier trip. I we'll just have to kind of see how it goes, really. But you can kind of see what I was going with with the setup. Um, you know, all this can come out, and then you haven't lost too much space at the bottom. But obviously, you have lost some. Um, you know, because you've essentially got a platform in there, sort of stealing around four inches of height. But is it enough to be a complete deal breaker? No. If it was a draw system, it would probably be way higher. Um, it would probably be even higher than that in some draw systems. And then the vehicle really is just kind of labelled um, as, a, as a kind of overlandy vehicle. And I kind of want mine to be a jack of all trades and a master of none. You know, a utilitarian vehicle that's versatile. You know, and I can take all this stuff out and I can throw a pram in. I can put suitcases in from the airport if the other car breaks down. You know, whatever really. So the aim is always to keep its versatility for me that's that's the main thing but um in the next video um i'm probably going to be re-gearing the vehicle i'm finally going to be re-gearing it i have to replace the rear drum brakes um and uh, and get that kind of sorted and then after that's done it's re-gears and that's going to be a massive job and then in the meantime i'm just going to be working on this you know dressing it up trying to find materials like carpet and things to sort of make it look a bit better and, and you know working on the stove system as well got the battery systems just arrived so i'm going to have a video on that coming up pretty soon comparing it to my old battery setup in terms of like the watt hour usage and what the new setup can do and you know the prices and things like that so um yeah that should be quite an interesting one moving forward but I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've talked a lot as usual at the end of this, but uh, just kind of want to give people an update if they're interested in following along with the build. And uh, I'll see you very soon in another one. Thanks again. Take care.